In previous video lectures, we have introduced and showed the general structure of a digital control system. We have also determined the output transfer functions of open loop discrete linear turn invariant systems. In this video lecture, we will extend these techniques to obtain the transfer function for closed loop discrete turn systems. Now we derive the output function for the system shown here. We can express c of s as equal to g of s multiplied by e star of s. And we know e star of s is the signal, the discrete signal after the sampler. We can also express the error signal g of s as the desired input minus whatever information coming through this branch which is h of s multiplied by c of s and this is equation one and this is equation two so if we substitute one into two we get e of s equal to r of s minus g of s h of s e star of s if you notice here we have a star e and here we don't have a star so if we start the whole function then we would be able to find the e star function So the sampling of the E of S is E star of S. Sampling of the input, desired input is R star minus, since G in S and H in S are both in a continuous time basis, we have to multiply them, then apply the star function. This leads to G H star, and then E star stays as is. If we continue finding e star of s, moving this to the left hand side and taking e star of s as common factor, we end up with e star of s as 1 plus gh star of s equals to r star of s. So solving for e star of s, we get. And from equation number one, substituting e star of s into equation one, we get c of s equals to g of s multiplied by the e star of s. What we have obtained now is the continuous output expression. So if we start equation 1 to find the sampled output c star in s, we get c star in s equals to g star in s e star in s. This is equals to g star in s if we put the value of e star back up, that will lead to the sample output. Of course, when we substitute z equal to exponential of st, we get the z relation. So yes, the pulse transfer function can be obtained for this uh, sample data closed loop system by simply taking the input and moving it to the left side.
Please note that a star of s is a series of impulse functions. And so we must assume that g of s receives the impulses through a zero order hold. This will be always the case unless specified otherwise. Please note that problems can be encountered in deriving the output pulse transfer function for closed loop systems. In this exercise, we have substituted the value of CS from equation number one. Then we have applied the start Laplace formula. However, if we star straight away equation number two and apply it in equation number one, then we won't be able to find the transfer function. Let's see how this works. So suppose now equation 2 is a start and then substituted in equation number 1. Substituting E star in S. In equation one, we get and starting this expression, we get C star of S. If you notice that we won't be able to find C star because it's embedded with the H function. So we cannot factor it out. And as a result, we cannot solve for it. In general, in analyzing a system, an equation should not be starred if a system signal is lost as a factor. And such a closed loop system is still considered a simple system. In some cases, you may come across a complex system and it would be quite complex to find out the pulse transfer function. To conclude, by starting equation 2, first we couldn't find a relation for the C star of us. So before we develop a simpler method of analysis, uh, let's take another simple example of a closed loop digital control system and try to find its pulse transfer function. A quick note before we carry on with another example. If you notice the error signal here, it was sampled before it was applied to the analog element. From previous knowledge we know that a pulse transfer function exists. However, if you follow the wrong procedure, you may end up with no transfer function. And if you follow the right procedure, you may end up with the right pulse transfer function. Hence, the need for a simple procedure that we will develop after the second example. Let's consider the system shown here. If you notice the error signal 
is not sampled before being applied to the analog element G S. So we can expect no transfer function can be derived. Nevertheless, the system can be analyzed. We can write CNS equal to GNS ENS. And also we can write the error signal ENS is the desired input minus the information in this branch, which is H of S multiplied by C star of S. So here we have C star, it's a uh, sampled output signal. And here we have C in S. So substituting the two in one, we get the following. Starting the result leads to If you notice that the desired input or the forcing function R of S is now lost as a factor. C star of S can be expressed as It's evident that no transfer function can be derived for this closed loop system. The problem mainly resides in that the input, the input, is not sampled before it's being applied to the analog part. Remember, in practical systems, you may have more than one input. So one input could be your desired settings. Another input could be a disturbance in a speed cruise controller for example your desired settings will be perhaps setting the speed if that speed is sampled before it's applied to the analog element then you will be able to find a relation between the output and the input however a transfer function cannot be developed from a wind input for example to your desired speed output in the next video we will develop a procedure for finding the transfer function of closed loop digital control systems